Laura Branigan's Spanish Eddie, teamed with No Looking Back by Michael McDonald. 73 degrees with cloudy skies in Platteville. Once again, it's time for the latest in Tri-County News. Good afternoon. One of the two Grant County court cases concerning possession of controlled substances with intent to deliver has been resolved. Paul Ihus and Ronald Ballard, both of rural Dodgeville, entered a plea agreement waiving their rights to a preliminary hearing Monday and pled guilty. Sentencing was withheld and both were placed on two years probation. Each must spend 50 days in the Grant County Jail with work release. The jail terms won't start until January 3rd. The other drug case involving Keith Wilder of Cassville was also in court. Today, probable cause was found that Wilder was responsible for growing the 568 marijuana plants Grant County deputies claim from a federal wildlife reserve on an island of the Mississippi River. Wilder is now bound over for trial. The Grant County Employment Relations Committee decided this morning that Grant County needs a personnel director and plans to have one hired by January 1st. The committee will forward its recommendation to the Finance Committee, and they, in turn, will forward a recommendation to the full county board for their October meeting. Employee Relations Committee member Harold Shipley questioned how the county can pay for such a position. But County Board Chair Mary Worth said the county is currently spending money for a personal consultant plus union attorney fees. Other committee members voiced the opinion that the county should have had such a position ten years ago. No salary level was included in the action. Discussion centered on the salary being commensurate with the expenses. The Darlington School Board has decided it's time to formally organize the student assistance program. The board reviewed what it has online right now during their meeting last night. High school principal Dave Schellevold said so far the community support group is organized. The board also received a letter from the teacher committee proposing a simple flow of action. The board's policy committee will now take over and be ready with a recommendation to the board at their next meeting on what the program will entail. The road has been rerouted around the heating plant of the UW Platteville campus. That sets the stage for the next step in the renovation of Ottensman Hall. Higher than expected costs for the project have made progress a bit more complicated than expected. Chancellor William Schmerty recalls the first bid letting in early summer resulted in figures about a quarter million dollars over allocation. After some reductions were made, the bid opening on August 29th still saw figures $60,000 over the available funding. We went to the regions in early September, and in another week we're going to the State Building Commission to ask for an additional $60,000 to finish off that project. And I would hope that construction can actually begin so we can see something happening by the end of this month or more likely sometime early in October. Chancellor William Schmerny. Partly cloudy with a chance of showers and thunderstorms this evening. We'll see a low of 63 degrees with a south wind at 8 to 18 miles per hour. A chance of showers and thunderstorms continuing early tomorrow, then mostly sunny by the afternoon, 83 for Wednesday. Thursday, partly cloudy and again the high 83 degrees. 73 with gray skies. That's the latest in Tri-County News. The posse can go home. Two fugitives suspected of killing a state trooper have been caught in the mountains of North Carolina. The two men had escaped from an Arkansas prison and prompted the swearing-in of a 300-member posse that had been chasing the two since Saturday. The American chief negotiator at the Geneva Arms Talk says it's time for the Soviets to start negotiating for real instead of through the newspapers. We now await with interest to see if these forays into the headlines will be followed, as we hope they will, by concrete proposals. American negotiator Max Kampelman. The Soviets say the arms talks have already been hampered by the American Star Wars research. With the United States now owing more money to foreign countries than they owe the U.S., Congress is stepping up the effort to pass a trade bill. We have got to set down some rules which stop short of trade bashing, but leave no doubt that America is ready to fight barrier with barrier. House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Dan Rostenkowski. The goal is simple. Our goal is to make smoking as socially unacceptable in the years ahead as it was acceptable in the 1930s and 1940s. That's former Surgeon General Jesse Steinfeld. Three national health organizations have launched a media blitz around the new warning labels that will be going on cigarette packages and advertisements. Those new labels will first start showing up next month. There may soon be some new immigrants coming to the United States from Cuba. 
The National Conference of Catholic Bishops says Cuba is planning to release a number of political prisoners. A list of approximately 70 or 75 people was given to us by the Cuban government. The vast majority of them are uh, people who are being released at the initiative of the Cuban government. Monsignor Daniel Hoy of the Conference of Catholic Bishops says the next step is for the United States Immigration and Naturalization Service to screen the prisoners and determine if they are eligible to enter the United States. From the CBS Newsroom, I'm Pat Woodard. At home or on the go, WKPL Platteville is playing your favorite adult rock hits all day long. From Madonna, that's Dress You Up. And Cock Robin is on the way later. All alone I sit Looking out of the window And the rain just keeps coming on down Well, I cry to myself Constitution Week continues here in southwestern Wisconsin, and as a matter of fact, throughout the entire nation through Monday of next week. The Constitution is the oldest still in active use in the world today, and it is, of course, the basic document of the United States government. The Daughters of the American Revolution urge all Americans to study the Constitution and be worthy of its protection during Constitution Week. Please mail your Tri-County calendar information a week in advance to us here at WKPL, Box 1, Platteville. Shop Farm and Fleet for tremendous savings on fall outerwear for the entire family. You'll find a huge selection of men's coats for as low as $16.95. Select boys' jackets are $16.95 to $22.95. From stadium coats to bomber jackets, Farm and Fleet has a fine selection of girls' and women's outerwear. Flannel line denim jackets for women are just $25.99. Farm and Fleet has this season's most popular sweater styles at low, low fall catalog prices. Girls' Jordache V-neck vests are only $9.29. Men's famous name sweaters for just $9.99. And Shaker crewnecks for women are $10.99. You can always count on Farm and Fleet for the lowest prices on Lee jeans. Men's denim riders are only $15.49. Women's riders just $16.99. Shop Farm and Fleet's fall catalog for the lowest prices on high-quality brand-name leather boots for work or play. Make Farm and Fleet your fall fashion headquarters today. supply with the power of love you are my lady plus prince and the revolution with pop life your chance to win brewer tickets has come to fm 107 we will give you brewer updates whenever the brewers are in action be listening because those updates could make you a winner we have tickets for the september 29th game with toronto and they could be yours the way to win is easy just be the right caller when we give you a brewer update free